All right, so uh, my next project is going to be uh, working on my motorcycle. Uh, this is it right here, 93 Honda Shadow. Um, and I am going to bob it out, as they say. Um, keeping the rear suspension, because I like the squish. Uh, but that's what I'm going to do. So, um, as you can see, my seat has seen better days. The uh, Gorilla Tape just ain't cutting it anymore. So, um, I have a new seat that I got off eBay. This guy here. Uh, so hopefully it's pretty comfortable. It comes with a, um, a whole kit. Springs. As you can see here, I have two types of springs. Um, the regular coil springs. Um, and then these guys, I don't really know if these have a name. Uh, so because I'm keeping the rear suspension, I, I've seen it done both ways where you have the springs uh, mounted here with you know, onto the frame, uh, but I'm, since I'm keeping the rear suspension, you don't have to have the Springer seat if you want a more low profile seat uh, because you already have suspension on the bike, so you don't need both. Um, so I'm gonna make that decision when I get there. Um, I'm assuming I'm gonna have to fabricate some mounts. Uh, I've also, uh, by the way, I've also never done anything like this before, so we'll see what happens. But I'm probably going to have to fabricate some mounts to mount these springs on. Um, and if the spring can be mounted on, then I'm sure the seat can be mounted on right to the frame as well. So um, I can probably just go back and forth with it. If not, whatever, I'll make it work. So that's it. Um, first step that I'm going to do is take the seat off because I have to get access to taking these panels off. Uh, and expose, I gotta take the lights off, everything, and then I gotta expose the frame underneath, which will then get cut off um, to make a more low, pro low profile back end. So, uh, to take the seat off of a 93 Honda Shadow, uh, there's underneath, up inside here, there's two um, Allen bolts. There's one here, and there's one here. So, I'm gonna get in there right now, take the seat off. So, we'll see what that looks like. All right. Got the seat off. The two bolts go right in here. One here, one here. Uh, and it's only just those two. And then the front uh, clips underneath here. Uh, so no screw needed there. So once you get those off, the seat basically just flips right off. So um, basically the rear fender, if I can use my foot, goes from all the way up here. It's one big piece, goes all the way to the back. Um, so I don't really know what this entails taking it off. Looks like we got a bolt up top here. We got the gas tank bolt here. Um, looks like that's kind of connected somehow. So I'll look at that. Let's see what happens when I take those two off. I got to take uh, the brake light off, some wiring, um, and the uh, license plate, light, all that stuff. I got to I got to take off. So that's what I'm gonna do next. That uh, taking off the rear fender will be pretty cool to see what's underneath there as far as the frame is concerned. And then I can kind of see what I'm working with and what needs to be cut. <clears throat> so. All right, so there was a couple more bolts than just um, the bolt that was up on top here. Uh, there was one underneath the tail light. So in order to get this tail light off, I had to go up and underneath. It's probably going to be really hard to see, but up and underneath there was uh, two two studs. There's one stud right there coming down. Uh, there's one on the other side, and there are the studs right there, you take that off, and then I've already taken the nut off, but that stud right there goes through holding the uh, the fender on. And then underneath, tucked up underneath, you can see there's a hole there, and uh, there's a hole on the other side, so two more on the back here. Um, now everything is loose. I have the gas tank loose, you can see it's just kinda hanging out here. Uh, there's one bolt for that, and that's down here. Um, this is kind of tucked underneath that, so you just loosen the gas tank, kind of lift it up really quick, and this is going to slide out. Now, the only other thing that's going to hold this on is I have the, uh, the seat studs right here, which is part of the frame. I have the wire uh, for the tail light running underneath that, um, and as you can see, you know, we're not going to be able to lift this up and off while that wire is coming through. So, you can just basically disconnect the tail light right here. Um, I just wanna, you know, make sure you, I just took a picture of this so I know that the green 
with the yellow stripe wire goes into this single port here, um, matching with the other green and white stripe wire on the other side. The red wire goes with the red wire and the solid green wire um, comes in here. So I took a picture of that so I know how it hooks back up later on. Um, so, all right, let's take off this whole rear fender assembly and see what it looks like. All right, so that actually, just like I said, it slipped right off. Um, you kind of just pulled up the back and then slid it out towards the back of the motorcycle. And uh, this is what we got. So there's the whole rear frame, which uh, is what you're sitting on if you're a passenger. Um, so it's pretty beefy. But yeah, the um, the, uh, the whole, this all of this whole assembly is gonna get cut off. Uh, I guess somewhere right around here, I'm gonna have to do some measurements, see where my seat's gonna go and where I can make a connecting cross member for some mounting bolts. Um, but kind of back up here a little bit. But yeah, that's what it looks like. Can't wait to cut it off and then it'll actually have the quote unquote bobber look um, with just uh, the rear tire hanging out there. And I guess I'm gonna have to decide what I wanna do for a rear fender. I was thinking of doing something that kind of hugged it all the way up, but now I kind of look of, I like the look of like a little short stubby fender. I don't know. From what I gather from everything that I see online, the cool thing about doing your bobber build is, um, uh, there is no right or wrong way, you know, as long as you can put on what you need to put on as far as your taillights and um, license plate and, and whatever else you want to put on there, as long as it's like street legal, the look, totally up to you. So, um, so yeah, I guess I'm going to start stripping off some of the other stuff like the lights, the, uh, the, the directionals, the uh, license plate light holder, all that kind of stuff. Um, and whatever else I think needs to come off. Again, no idea what I'm doing. All right, so I just got finished uh, disconnecting the lights, um, how I went about doing that. So first off, actually, before I talk about the other lights, I reconnected the uh, brake light um, because I just realized that I'm gonna be buying all new lights, uh, so I'm just gonna cut everything. So, um, and before you go ahead and just cut everything make sure when you do cut it cut it up by the light uh, and leave everything like massively too long you can always make it shorter um, so uh, that's my little tip on cutting stuff but I just wanted to show you a little trick really quick um, I was just plugging these connectors back in and they're really tough to plug back in they got these um, little plastic coverings over them so they're hard to get your fingers in there so I was holding one side with one hand and trying to push the wire in and the wire kept bending and I didn't want to break the wire. So um, I carefully stuck a small screwdriver in there while holding this end um, and pushed the metal connector of the wire, this wire end um, and used that to push the connector in. Uh, and that seemed to work. I mean, just be careful you're not slipping and jamming things, just kind of do it carefully. But it went right in once I had uh, this little screwdriver and I'm just realizing that this screwdriver is even smaller I custom ground it down for something else I was working on so it fit nicely inside that sleeve so I just hooked everything back up turn the key on make sure the lights work so I know they're hooked up correctly and then I went ahead and I cut everything now when I cut stuff I cut it and then immediately labeled it right away so this was the first one I cut obviously it goes to the brake light so I cut it labeled it threw it aside um, did the same thing with the plate light, you got the left directional, and got the right directional over here. So, um, so now uh, all this stuff is disconnected, and the wires have been pulled out. Um, there's a few little tabs, so just little metal tabs that have been tack welded to the frame. You just might have to bend them out of the way a little bit to get the wires out. Um, so you pull them all out of the way, make sure everything's out of the way. Um, and now I'm ready to, I guess I'm gonna get my seat and kind of mount it on here and figure out, you know, where the mounts of the seat are gonna go so I know where I'm gonna cut my frame. Um, I definitely, like I said, with the wires, um, you know, 
I was talking to somebody and they were like, yeah, just make sure you cut it long, the frame long. You can always, it's like the wires, you can always cut the frame shorter. If you cut it too short and you needed it to be this long, uh, you're going to have to do some serious fabrication to get that back to where you wanted it to be. So um, I might just go ahead and uh, and just cut the frame, you know, somewhere safely back here. Um, I'm still going to put the seat on first just to make sure. But yeah, I might go ahead either way and just kind of cut it. And that kind of gets rid of this whole rear frame assembly and gets that out of the way anyway. Um, so anyway, that's that step. But uh, yeah, next step is figuring out where to cut. <laughs> uh, all right, so I decided that um, my seat is gonna be up here. Uh, I had the seat on and mounted, it's gonna be coming across, we have a cross member coming across here. So up here is definitely way too long still. So uh, I'm just gonna cut it to get this out of the way and then I can always cut more later. Uh, I've seen some guys using like cut wheels. Maybe it goes a little faster, but it shoots a ton of sparks. And everything's kind of exposed right here and I don't really have anything covered up so I'm just gonna go ahead and use a sawzall. I started cutting a little bit and it started pinching on me on that side so I didn't get all the way through. So I'm gonna cut on this side and hopefully it'll just kind of fall down. Um, so let's see how that goes. So um, I probably could have moved my motorcycle into a better area. I'm a little cramped over here, but this is what I got for right now. Um, and I was being extra careful, not putting too much pressure. I didn't want to stab into my tire, although I need to replace them anyway, so it wouldn't be that big a deal. But in case you have nice tires and you don't want to take it off because I'm being lazy right now. Um, but there you go. No turning back now, I guess. I just cut the whole rear frame of the motorcycle off. So I'm here at my former shop teacher's house. Um, he has a nice welding set up since as a woodworker. I don't really have a ton of metalworking stuff in my shop. So I just wanted to show you guys what we did. We welded on some brackets. So these are the two brackets. So you can see the cut frame. You already saw that. These are the two pieces of angle line we cut. Um, I did smash them on an anvil so that they're no longer 90 degrees, a little bit more of an obtuse angle. That way uh, the, the springs seat a little bit better. Um, this is my former shop teacher, say hey. Hi. <laughs> so those are the, uh, those are the, those are the mounts. Uh, the only thing I had to do different is that the springs didn't line up to the original studs on the seat. Um, the original studs are the ones that are bolted right here with the nut on them. So that, with the original studs had the springs lining up with exactly where the frame was and we needed to have them come in a little bit so as you already just saw we milled up this piece of metal drilled a couple of holes in it i have two new studs coming out so when i mount this up and the springs come down you can see that the the bolts that are there they actually line up with the holes the springs that's how i'm going to mount the springs on so uh, i'll probably clean this up a little bit i gotta paint it um, but that's it, that's how I weld it on. And now uh, the next step is I'm gonna cut off the rest of, so I cut these too long on purpose, right? So now I'm gonna cut the rest of it off, fill in the holes, weld it, and then I'll grind it all up later so it looks a little bit nicer than just these square studs sticking out. So that'll be the next step. All right, so that looks a little cleaner, a little less of uh, the um, you know studs sticking out there, so it looks a little nicer. So now we're gonna, work on filling in um, the frame and uh, so we're going to jam some, some stock in there and then we're going to weld it up a little demonstration on welding see how good the old guy is you know Beg your butt. <laughs> Yeah, I think it looks pretty good. Nothing a grinder can't handle. All right, you're hired. Thank you.
So just a quick little tr trick on this. The gap was bigger uh, than the steel itself. So we literally just beat it with a hammer to make sure the gap was slightly smaller. And then I just forced that piece of metal in uh, by tapping it with a hammer. Um, we had the other side clamped because it was almost almost too loose. So we were squashing the gap a little bit. This one goes in there pretty tight. So no clamp necessary. All right, so we just finished. I got it all um, mounted up. I think it looks pretty good. Solo seat uh, with a, I don't even know what type of spring that's called, but it actually, I do have a different spring too. I could put on there. Um, it's a regular coil over spring. So what you're used to using, used to seeing for a spring, you know, just the, the winding metal going down. So it came with both. I could swap it out if I want to, but um, I think it looks kind of cool, a little classic with those. Uh, with that style spring so anyway yeah next step now is to figure out where the heck i'm going to put my directionals and i got to come up with some sort of uh cover um to cover up my my gas and electrical components and stuff so um i think they make covers little seat pans that go underneath there but um you can always make one yourself it's always kind of cool to fabricate that kind of stuff yourself so we'll see but that's what it looks like i'm pretty happy like I said, still need to grind up all those, those studs there, but um, looks good.